This occurred just last week, when my mother was driving home from working late one night. She lives out in a woodier area, with a lot of farmland around her. I'm talking acres and acres of farmland. I think a lot of it is mainly used for cattle. Anyway, she was coming around a bend in the road, when red eye shine was caught in her headlights. Some sort of creature, she says, stepped out onto the road in front of her, on two feet. This thing quickly walked across the street, and cleared it in only a few steps. It passed by in only mere seconds, but it was enough time for my mother to get somewhat of a look at it. She said it was tall, estimated it to be between seven to ten feet. She said it was lanky, and it was a dark, smoky gray color. This thing never glanced over at her approaching on the road, but the side profile reminded her of a large German shepherd head. The body reminded her of a man, a very skinny, lanky man, covered in dark gray fur. She also noticed this being to have long black claws on the tips of its hands, hands being what could only resemble raccoon-like hands from what she saw in only a couple seconds. That's all that time would allow her to see, and she didn't get any details on the muzzle, ears, if it had a tail. She was doing between 50 to 55 miles per hour when it walked across the road in front of her, just for a few seconds. Then she slowed down to about 30 or so, accordingly. Once it crossed, she continued to still slow down, a result of being partly in shock at what she had seen and worried there might be more crossing the road. She kept on driving, though. After a few moments of realizing there was no more coming, she had a hard time sleeping that night, believing that what she saw was some sort of unknown animal. She told me that she's never seen an animal like that in her life, and has never heard of such things. I'm one of the only people that's been told about it besides her best friend. My mother isn't into the paranormal, but there's no explaining what she saw that night coming home from work. This occurred not too far away from Knox County, Ohio. I saw something years back when I was visiting the Buck Shoals State Park. It's a tradition of my friends and me that every year we go hiking around the park. Summer and or fall is the time of year we try and go. In fact, one of our favorite spots to hit in the park is the Chattahoochee River. With all the surrounding timber, it's beautiful, and the fresh air is terrific on the lungs. We decide after a while of hanging out at the river to hike in further like we usually like to do. I lead the way with my friends about 50 yards behind me. Generally, I like to scout out the area ahead to look for cool things to check out. Before that's been trails, markings, animal tracks, anything interesting that I deem. This time though, I would run into something that I've had a hard time dealing with. I've actually had to seek a therapist for what I saw. For some of us, when you see something that's not supposed to exist, it shatters your realm of reality. Anyway, I was walking further ahead of my friends and I noticed a small clearing that dipped down. I figured we would cross the clearing and continue venturing on. But as I approached the clearing, I saw at the bottom of the hill looked to be a large animal eating a dead deer. I stopped in my tracks at first, thinking it was a large bear eating on the carcass. Right off the bat though, something about the animal seemed off. It didn't look right. Where I was standing, I can only really see it from behind. It was shaped weird. I know that we have sizable black bear down here and that's what popped in my head at first. After not even 10 seconds, this thing must have noticed, me being around because it stopped eating and lifted its head in the air and began sniffing. To my horror, that's when I saw more details of this thing. The longer snout, the pointy ears. It shifted its body as it lifted its head up, so I was able to see more details of the body. This thing looked like a giant dark wolf that looked mutated I don't know how to describe it to you other than that. It freaked me out. My friends came up behind me, wondering why I was standing still and silent. 
without breaking eye contact with this thing, sniffing. I quickly motioned for them to look out into the clearing. Both of my friends gasping, and my one buddy saying, What the hell is that thing? After what seemed like minutes of this thing sniffing the air, even though it was probably only ten seconds, I said, Guys, we need to turn around and leave. We all left the area. I wasn't going to chance sticking around and having this thing notice us. I'm blown away that this thing probably caught our scent, but either A, never saw us, or B, knew we were there and realized we weren't a threat. I'm really not sure. I was roughly about 100 to 200 yards away. What I saw looked like a giant black mass that looked more canine than anything else. I've seen a black bear before, and this thing didn't quite look like a black bear. It was lighter in color and bigger, plus the shape was different, especially as it started moving its body. This happened to me last winter, and I haven't seen this creature since. I'm not quite sure if this thing moves around or possibly even migrates from area to area. I can say it's a predator I didn't know existed, and I keep very close eye on my surroundings now, no matter where I go to. Where I live is about ten miles out of town. I have several old fields around my house from where the last people who lived here had horses and other livestock. Beyond the fields are woods. These woods go on for miles and miles, and if you go back far enough, the land dips down into a creek that runs along the area. There is a lot of deer out here, mostly does, but you do see the occasional buck or two from time to time. Like I said, mostly all doe. In fact, I pretty commonly see the same 20 or so doe that lives around the area all the time. They bed down under a tree not far from my house out in the field. To give a little more detail about my house, it's a little older and larger, so it takes a lot to heat up, especially in the winter. In fact, because of where our wood stove is, it's not uncommon for us to go through five or so cords of wood every winter from November to March so we always try and prepare our wood well. Normally, since we have so much wood, I have a wood splitter set up in my woodshed so I can do all my splitting and stacking right there. Once I get enough wood split and stacked, I try and keep the wood holder right in front of my house stocked full so I don't have to make long trips out to the woodshed every time I need to put a log on the fire. I think this is a pretty common thing for most people who have wood stoves and rely primarily on wood stove heating. Anyway, in the morning, usually before I leave for work, I try and have my wood holder outside my front door full of wood for my wife so she doesn't have to go into our shed. But this morning, I was running late. My wife had to make do with the small wood that was there, and so it wasn't until I got home that evening that I got an earful and had to go out and make sure she had plenty of wood, which was my bad. I usually like to keep it filled up for her. It was dark out since I get home closer to six, and I was going to grab some split wood and fill up our wood holder. I remember stepping outside my house and noticing the air feels... different. Do you know the feeling when a thunderstorm approaches and the air feels heavier? That's how it felt, except it was January and it was frigid outside. I thought it was weird, but quickly brushed it off and walked my way to the woodshed. As I'm in the woodshed grabbing some pieces of wood to put in the holder, I began to get a bad feeling, like someone or something was hiding out beside my shed and was waiting for me to walk out, so they could attack me. I keep a knife in my pocket, but with my arms full of a bundle of wood, I wasn't going to offer much of a fight. I felt nervous. I wasn't sure why I was feeling this. We've lived here for years, went through the same thing every winter, never had problems ever. In fact, the only predators we've ever seen around these parts are coyotes, and maybe a bobcat here or there. I've never felt uncomfortable any time around where I live. At the time, I honestly thought someone had walked up to my driveway and was planning on hurting my family or me. I tried to brush those thoughts aside and tried to forget about the feeling I had. 
I walked at a brisk pace back to my front porch to begin loading up the wood holder. As I'm crouched down stacking the wood, the feeling of dread intensifies. What's worse is my back is complete to the woods and woodshed. I'm defenseless right now, a thought that wouldn't escape me. It only took a moment or two for me to stack the wood in the holder before I turned around and stepped off my porch, only to stop right in my tracks. In my direct line of sight were these glowing yellow eyes staring at me from one of the trees close by the woodshed. I could just barely make out the silhouette of something very large behind the tree, with one what looked to be a hand holding onto the tree for supports. It was pretty dark out, but my porch light shone enough where I could make out very minimal details. I remember as soon as I saw those eyes. I noticed the shape of tall ears. I stood there in place, frozen, and this thing, not even a couple seconds later, hides back behind the tree. I felt like I was in grave danger, so I quickly ran inside my house and grabbed my pistol. My wife was wondering why I was pale and had run inside so quickly, grabbing my gun. I explained to her that there's a large predator outside and we should stay inside and be quiet. I was terrified at the moment, but looking back I think it was more because of the unknown at the time. Anyway, I waited inside a few hours for this thing to be gone and courageously had made my way back outside to grab some more wood, since we were just about out of all the wood inside that we had. As soon as I stepped outside, the feeling was lifted. It was closer to 9 or 10 p.m. at that point. The woods were quiet, but the air felt normal again. Things were calm. I wasn't taking chances, though, and I remember I had never stacked wood so fast in my life after that. After I quickly filled up our outside wood storage, the rest of the night was uneventful. The next morning I was curious to see if there would be any tracks in the dirt. Keep in mind it hadn't snowed yet. So I walked out to where I saw this thing standing behind the tree. There was nothing. No signs of nothing. The dirt below didn't even look disturbed at all. I was confused and began to think I was going crazy. Things calmed down after that, and for the next week, everything was normal as I recall. I want to say it was the following weekend where I took my wife out to dinner and a movie. As we're pulling back up in the driveway, our headlights shine on the largest black wolf I've ever seen in my life. We were about three quarter of the way up to our driveway, just as we're pulling into around our house. This large wolf walks right past where our house is into the fields. It looked right over at us and looked disfigured. I've never seen a wolf like that. It looked like it came from a toxic waste dump or something, or deformed even. My wife screamed. This thing, I kid you not, was easily the size of a buffalo. It was utterly massive. My wife began to panic and quickly went into the back of the house. I didn't know what to think, to be honest so I just kept my pistol at my nightstand ready in case this thing tried to break into the house. This is where things changed. The following nights we began to hear howling in the distance. We've heard packs of coyotes hollering off in the distance before, but this was powerful howling. So loud, and we'd hear bizarre animal noises just outside our house at night. Everything from tapping, clicking, shuffling, rustling, you name it. I felt like our house was being cased or something. One morning my wife came running into the house in hysterics because she was walking down to the mailbox to check the mail. Our mailbox is all the way at the end of our driveway, mind you, and she said that huge black wolf that we saw nights ago was standing on two legs in the driveway, growling at her, walking towards her. She began screaming and crying and ran back into the house. She was frantic and was begging me to grab my gun worried that this thing was headed right to our house this very moment. I got my pistol, but as I picked it up from my nightstand, the realization that this thing would only tickle this animal rung home, and in that very moment, I felt like some wounded prey that was about to be eaten. I glanced outside to see if maybe I could see it somewhere, but I didn't see it anywhere outside our front. My wife basically went and hid the rest of the day, and I never heard or saw that thing outside. I didn't go outside looking, though, 
It's possible it could have been an ambush, but I'm not sure. Things continued and continued to get worse. I would find mutilated deer carcasses in my front yard. One time, while coming home from work and driving up my driveway, there was a deer carcass right in the middle of the driveway. It looked like it had a few limbs ripped off, and it was disemboweled gruesomely from the view I had in my driver's seat with my headlights on it. I had a bad feeling like this animal had purposely killed and left this carcass here, knowing I would have to get out and move it, making me vulnerable just long enough for it to get me. This thing, though, was very intelligent, and it really scared me. I just drove around the carcass over the side slopes of the driveway. I truly felt trapped. This animal, whatever it was, that I had never seen before, had been tormenting us for reasons I will never know. Those were the major main events that happened. Things continued like this for a while. Around March or April, things started quieting down. We hadn't noticed much, but the deer had actually disappeared from that area entirely the past few months, which never happens. We realized that when we saw much of the deer come back to the area around springtime, we hadn't had any weird feelings, and things got back to normal, for the most part. I apologize for this being so long, but I just can't quite put my finger on what kind of animal would do such a thing. My wife and I are still baffled alone at the fact that this creature even exists. If any one of you out there has any information on what we might have dealt with, please let us know. I mentioned earlier we hadn't seen this thing since February or March, and are glad that it seems like it left the area. We've lived here for years now and have never encountered something as unusual as this. However, with winter approaching again, we're not sure if this animal will show back up. That's something that truly terrifies me. I was about 15 when this happened to my friend and me. I'm 32 now, so this was a while back. We were out on his father's property shooting off a pellet gun practicing our aim. We had quite a few old fodder cans we had sitting at the top of old fence posts, and we'd try to see who could shoot them from the farthest point away. This was all dandy and fun, and we were having a great time. This was in July, so it was hot outside. I remember because I had a couple of cigarettes on me at the time, and the thought that I didn't want to light one there because all the tall dead grass could ignite. After about an hour of us doing this, I told my friend nature was coming, and so I walked into the forest that's surrounding the whole property where we were shooting off our pellet guns. I walked in maybe no more than a hundred feet to the base of a tree and started pissing on the bottom of the tree. I'm almost done pissing and I sense someone's looking at me. I glance over to my right and to my horror, not even twenty feet away from me, is a monster straight out of a Hollywood movie, a werewolf except it was scarier than I ever could have imagined. This thing was hulking. It looked like someone took the head off a wolf, stuck it on a hairy bodybuilder. This werewolf's head was massive, like the size of a lion's. It stared at me right in the eyes, and I saw how smart this thing was. It's like it realized that I realized it existed, and it was what it was. It did something next that's even hard for me to talk about because it scares me so bad. This thing gave me the evilest grin. This creature was so intelligent that it grinned at me like it had me all alone. It was going to rip my guts out and eat me. I got an overwhelming feeling that this thing wanted to hurt me. I had never felt pure evil like that in my life. This thing was jet black and had piercing amber colored eyes and the biggest teeth I've ever seen of any wolf. It began to extend its arm towards me and took a couple steps and I ran so fast out of there back into the field where my friend is shooting off the pellet gun. I don't even stop. I just yell to him, Get back to the house. Now. We got back to the house in a flash, and my friend was terrified because of how hard I was running. I was pale, shaken up, and he could tell something had happened. He kept asking me, What happened? What's wrong? I told him what I saw, and he seemed like he believed me. He kept looking back to where we came from and said he never saw anything chasing me or us. 
The funny thing is, we ended up going back to those areas to hike and explore in the coming months. Neither him nor I saw that thing after that. What's spooky is that years later, when we were going to college, that same friend told me how other weird stuff used to happen on his father's property all the time. The most notable being he would hear these loud metal scraping sounds off in the forest. He was surrounded by heavy forest, and then state game land beyond that. There's no reason he should have ever heard metal scraping. It still scared him even to this day. This happened to me in July, in 1985. I was living in Kentucky at the time, at an undisclosed location. My family has owned property that's been in my family's generation for a very long time, that is surrounded by a bunch of woods. Let me give you a lay of the land. In the front of the house, it's open yard and our driveway, which is roughly 300 yards and leads to a gravel road. To the left side of our house is our vegetable garden, which is about 16 by 20 feet. And then I would say about another 100 yards of open pasture and then wood line. Behind our house is probably about 20 to 30 feet and then more wood line. Now the woods behind the house keeps going and connects with the woods on both sides of the house and pasture. There's also about a hundred or so yards of pasture on the right side of the house as well, followed by more woods. About fifty yards out on the right side of the house, past the vegetable garden, I have a small tool shed where I keep all my stuff. One night, my wife and I were inside eating dinner, and it was around 8 p.m. I remember, because it was still sunny outside, but getting dark out, I started to get an ominous feeling, and I noticed the hair starting to stand up on my neck and arms. Now, I should note that I had the windows open for a breeze, and out here in Kentucky, you could hear the wildlife. I noticed that it was pretty quiet outside. Something wasn't quite right. Of course, I wasn't going to tell my wife, so I just brushed it off and continued to have dinner. When not even five minutes later, I hear this bang crash sound by the shed. From where I'm sitting, we have a window in which I could perfectly see the shed in the garden. Even in the dark, I was able to make out and see that there wasn't anything visually out of place, which I thought was odd. I decided to go and grab my twenty-two, which I kept by the door, and went to investigate. I just remember walking over to grab my rifle, and right as I put my hand on the door, it's almost like my instinct kicked in. My entire body just told me, don't go out there, whatever you do. It was the strangest sensation I've ever felt in my life. It's as if I was frozen in fear. So I sat there for a minute, and waited. I didn't hear anything outside that wasn't normally there, and it continued to stay perfectly silent, so much so that you could hear a pin drop. My wife is now scared because she totally senses it too, and I go and I decide to close up all the curtains and lock all the doors. I wasn't sure what was going on, but I just felt in every fiber of my being that it wasn't safe to be outside. Me and my wife decided to go in our bedroom and try to get some sleep for the night. I remember closing my eyes, but there's no way me sleeping was going to happen anytime soon. I must have dozed off, because the next thing I remember is my wife waking me up and hushing me, but it ended up coming out a panicked whisper. She was telling me that there's somebody outside of our window. Now, where we live, I know that's impossible, since we are miles away from the nearest neighbor. I turned to look over out the window, just like out of a horror movie. I see the silhouette of a wolf standing upright in our window. The moon was out that night, 
because it was illuminating this thing, whatever it was standing outside our window. It had sharp, pointy ears with little tufts of hair on the top, and its head was massive and shaped like a wolf. Now, something to note is that our window is like six to seven feet off the ground, so this thing had to have been tall and standing to even get its head in the whole window view. We have those thin curtains that cover our window, just enough to where you can't see anything outside, but if something were to stand in the way, you could definitely see a silhouette. It wasn't even more than five seconds until I first saw it that it started growling, and it was so deep and guttural. I'm honestly surprised I didn't urinate myself right there. Then it reached out with its hands and started tapping on the window like it wanted us to let it in. My wife is entirely hysterical, and I run out of the room to grab the rifle from earlier. I run back to the front door and grab the gun, not caring what my instincts tell me, and open the front door and run outside, to the side of the house where this thing is. It takes me maybe five to ten seconds to run out to where the window is, and it's nowhere to be seen. I'm looking all around our house, but I'm not seeing anything. I don't have a flashlight with me, and the only lights are coming from inside the house and the porch light which is just barely illuminating where I am outside. I stood outside for a minute or two, looking for this thing, and I didn't see anything. What freaks me out is my hair was still standing up and the forest was still quiet. After about a minute, I walked back in the house and checked up on my wife, who is still hysterical, and asked her what just happened. She said it just left. Her and I weren't sure what to do at that point, so we just sat there and waited for this thing to come back. It never did the rest of the night, and I don't think her and I fell back asleep until about five in the morning. This was a long time ago, but that was the only time I've ever encountered such a beast. I've never encountered anything like it since, and I hope I never do.